Hey, this is Daniel Norton. I'm here in my studio in New York City, and today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. Um, normally I show you kind of photo shoots and stuff, but today we had uh, shot the video for the B10 Plus, the new Profoto B10 Plus. If you guys haven't seen that, check it out. Um, and they needed a few more kind of beauty shots of the light. So instead of doing that on location stuff the day of, it's simpler just to do it here in the studio. So um, I thought I'd show you guys how we do that, because it's kind of interesting, and lighting is lighting, whether you're doing it for video or stills. Um, some of the stuff will change slightly, and we'll talk about that, but uh, in general, it's going to be good. So this is the B10 Plus, if you guys haven't seen it, it's a little flash, uh, you know, strobe light. Basically, it's black, and kind of going along with that aesthetic that you see a lot now, kind of these, like, black, uh, on black looks, what I did was I got a piece of duvetine, and I'm just basically hanging it here. Now, I'm going to use daylight balance lights for this, and they have to be constant lights, because I'm shooting video, right? Um, I use a lot of tungsten lights, you guys have seen that before, but it's the morning and I need to do it today so I can't uh, wait till it's evening in here to block out all the daylight and um, also it's going to help me a little bit to give me a little fill. I won't have to like light the ground and stuff. So I'm going to work with the daylight a little bit, but I want to shape it the way I want it. So um, if you didn't, if you were shooting at night, what I would do is I'd bounce like another uh, daylight balance light off. I have a wall over here that if you guys have watched enough videos, you probably know there's a wall over there. Um, but for these purposes, I won't need to. So. Um, here's the light. I've got the HMI. It's in basically, it's a 200 watt HMI, which is a daylight balance hot light. It's in a one foot square soft box with a grid on it. The grid so I can keep as much light as possible off the duvetine. Um, duvetine is pretty good at the kind of, kind of absorbing light, but still you want to try to control your light as much as you can. So we're going to do that. I am using a soft box because if I just took the light and pointed it right at it, even though I could use barn doors to control the spill, I would have a hot spot. It wouldn't be as even, even with the, the widespread because this light is shiny. You know, it's black, but it's not matte black. It's got like a little sh a sheen to it. So I want a diffuse light source, and that's one reason why I'm using a softbox. We talked about this in a few other videos where I talk about you don't just use a softbox because it's soft, you use it because it makes it diffused. So we want a diffuse light source, so that's what we're gonna get here. Um, let me move this guy out of your way. So basically, I'm just gonna move it in. I already have it on. You gotta kind of warm up HMI, so I started it before we started. And I'm gonna move it in so I get light right across the top of the light where I want it. Just like that. And we can move it in and out. You know, because what I'm doing is I have all this light from the window that's coming this way, giving it uh, some light, but there's nothing really on top. So that's really what I'm doing right now. I'm trying to get light on top so you guys can see that. We're going to kind of move it in to where we like it. You know, and again, I'm working with the daylight. If you weren't working with the daylight, you would need some fill, because otherwise this would probably be too contrasty. So let's see what we're getting so far. Okay, that looks pretty good. I'm actually gonna, I'll zoom in with this camera, because we plan on doing that. And we can see, the manual focus here, we can see that with focus peaking on and everything, that I'll be able to focus nice and crispy on there. That looks pretty good. I'm gonna do a, it's always a good idea to kind of do a, Normally, like if it's tungsten lights, you just turn them on and off, but the HMI, you really can't be turning it on and off, it's just the way they are. So I just want to compare it. Yeah, so, I mean, while I can see the light there, it doesn't have that three-dimensionality that I want. So, move that back, that was a good spot for it. Right there, okay. That in and of itself is not terrible, you know, because, like I say, there's light bouncing around the space and the actual Profoto logo is pretty shiny, so you can actually see it. But we like to go the next step further and do something a little nicer, obviously. So I've got this guy here. This is the Data Light uh, DL87, which is an LED light. It is um, eye color, uh, though we're not going to need to use that function right now. Um, I want to use this one because it's got a lot more dimming range. This is why I'm using this here and that there. What I have on the front of it, it looks monstrous, I know, is a, a projection attachment or an imager with, uh, with framing shutters. So. What that's gonna allow me to do is, when I take this light and I move it in, I'm gonna fire it up. Whenever I'm doing this, I always turn the dimmer uh, all the ways up so I go as bright as possible so I can see what I'm doing. I'm gonna set it to, to 5500 Kelvin, which is daylight, it's already there. And I'm gonna open up my shutters and you guys can see you know, the light, right? I'm shining it here. It's basically creating a circle of light. We can zoom it you know, to make it wider or tighter. So then that's fine, but what we really want to do, I mean, that lights up the whole front of it, which, you know, is okay. But what I want to do is just light up. It says Profoto, it says B10+, Plus, and, it's, and it has the little markings where you set the head. So I think for me, that's the important part. So what I'm going to do is take my 
framing shutters, and I'm actually going to move them in. Like so. To create, basically. Uh, you can actually, I can make them totally square, but I actually kind of like making it a little bit off so it feels like more, a little more natural. But you know, it kind of comes down to taste. And that, that's why I'm going to be at kind of at the edges too. The other thing you can do here is you can focus and defocus it. So I'm going to, you know, if I focus it, you'll really see the, the sharpness of it. But I'm going to defocus it a lot. So it's, you know, I want it more subtle. We want it there, but we want it to be less obvious. This is kind of the control of this, right? So that looks pretty good as far as positioning. And I'm going to look through my camera and I'm just going to dial it down to where I want it, you know, and this comes down to personal choice because clearly you could already see the pro photo. So I don't need the light here just to see it. I just want it to have a little flavor. So right there looks pretty good to me. I'm going to take a peek through the camera. Okay. I'm going to focus a little bit here. And we're good to go. So now, this will be not the easiest thing in the world to show now what we do, but if you've seen these kind of things, what we're gonna do now is we're gonna shoot a variety of shots. I'm on a tripod. I could just shoot a still picture if I was just gonna do that. You can do a lot of different things. Some things I like to do is like turn lights on and off, uh, so we could try that. So we're already recording. So I could make a scene where it's like, there's no light on the pro photo, and then, boom, there's light on the pro photo. Right, we could do that. We could do the same thing by dimming it up and down. We could turn the light. That's sometimes a fun thing to do. So I could do, let me turn it on. So let's say I'll turn on the modeling light. And I'm actually going to set this modeling light to be daylight so it matches. And I'll, I'll turn it up, I'll crank it. And then I'll swing it towards my camera like this. Right? That might be a fun shot. You know, that might be a cool opening or a way to. Because I'm shaking it. So when you're doing this, you want to be as steady as possible. Like that, right? Nice and simple. We also can show the menus in the back if we want, you know? In this case, because I'm now lighting the duvetine, what I would do is I'll go in and I'll just turn this light, I'll leave it at daylight, but I'll turn it down all the way so it's doing minimal amount of lighting if I want to leave it on at all. And you guys can see there, and this is a zoom lens, so I could easily zoom in if I want. So I could take a look at the menu system. It's still in focus. You know, here, you know, this light's now hitting the side, which isn't really what I want it. So you could either take it out, or we could adjust it to see the buttons, or we could adjust it to see the pro photo down there. You had a lot of options. If I'm just shooting the back of it, I might do something like that. But if I'm going to put my hands in there, I'll end up lighting my hands. So I don't really don't want to do that. So for this, I, wouldn't, I would just either not have it in there at all, or I'd maybe come from the side. But you can kind of mess around. You guys will see in the video, depending on how much of it they use, I did a bunch of different things. I handheld the camera to get some of the shake. I did some movements with it. I spun the light. I went up and down different angles. Because now that it's here, I can basically do whatever I want. I can really mix it up. You know, I can do a lot of different things here. And this is a pretty good, you know, lighting scenario. It basically puts me in a position where I can do a lot of different things pretty quickly. And I can change it up pretty dramatically. And again, I'm thinking about my product. I'm thinking about shape. I'm thinking about form. And this is kind of what I'm doing. Now, again, you can do a lot of product photography with one light. You can do product photography with 10 lights. There's a lot of different things you can do. You got to really think about what you're doing with it. In this case, because it's video. See, I've actually set this up and, and I can do the video and I want it to feel like video. So I'm going to probably do some camera movements. You know, hold, even if you're holding the camera, with a, these cameras are really well stabilized. So, you know, a little bit of shake in it will, will let you realize it's a video. And, but I'm on a tripod. I can easily shoot a still. So that's also tremendously useful for me. It gives me the position to do both things. This is what I'll say about this. Sometimes people will say things like, you got a 4K camera, you can just pull a still. But in these situations, if I wanted stills of this, I would not do that. I would just take a still. It doesn't take any extra time, really. I'm already there. It makes more sense for me to do the still as an actual still. It'll be a bigger file, and it'll sure as heck be sharper because you're not moving around. So that's a little bit of a kind of insight and kind of behind the scenes look for you guys of how we produce this video and how we kind of add things in. If this is the kind of thing that interests you, let me know because we could also maybe I could take another shooter on, let's say, some of the more elaborate shoots and kind of shoot that behind the scenes if that's something that is interest you of how we make the videos. Um, if not, and you just want to see more of the stuff, photography stuff that I usually do, you'll definitely be getting plenty of that. So thanks for watching, guys. Be sure to subscribe to Adorama TV. Follow me, Daniel Norton Photographer, and I'll see you next time on set.